Okay guys, so today I was modifying my receive front end. Now, I use this receiver to receive the Schumann resonance at about 7.5 Hz. And I also use it as a general receiver that receives in the range of DC to about 192 kHz. Um, although I use it with a sound card and that really only allows it to receive DC to 90 kilohertz or so. Um, I modified it today because I, I actually used a BNC socket for the input and the input on this is very very high impedance and because of the fact that it's such a high impedance and I used a 50 ohm or 75 ohm BNC socket it tends to swamp that high impedance a bit and it reduces the sensitivity. So what I've had to do was use a banana plug and put a socket on the uh, metal box well insulated from the metal by lots of plastic uh, to try and create an actual high impedance uh, input to this uh, uh, front end okay a quick description of the unit um, it's got a an on off switch obviously there's two 9 volt batteries in there there's a very sensitive uh, preamp in there and a FET. The, the purpose of this unit really is to convert a very very high impedance down to a more manageable impedance that you can feed into a receiver or a sound card. So high impedance in at this end with the antenna, low impedance out at this end. So basically what it, all it really is is a, a, an impedance converter. What happens is if you were using an antenna that's say a meter or two or three meters long at uh, 7 Hertz for example that antenna would have an impedance of hundreds of giga ohms and the signal would be absolutely tiny and what this what this converter does is basically converts that extremely high impedance down to something low impedance which is more manageable amplifies it a little bit then sends it to your sound card or your receiver from there it gets amplified a little bit further onto a laptop or a computer and uh, some type of SDR software so that, that's basically the unit in a nutshell. I thought it'd be a good idea today to actually demonstrate receiving a signal, transmitting and receiving a signal at one hertz or two or three hertz. We'll see how we go. We'll try to. We'll do one hertz. One hertz should be fine, but uh, maybe we'll go a little bit higher just to make life a little bit easier. So that's the unit. What I'll do now is I'll uh, stop, connect it all up, get started on the demo. Okay, I've now got the unit connected up via some RG58 coaxial cable that comes through into my 24-bit um, 192 kilohertz sound card, which then goes to the laptop via a uh, shielded cable with a couple of uh, ferrite uh, chokes on the actual lead itself. Now I've got the software here. I just uh, might need two hands here. We'll run the software. Now I'm using Spectrum Lab for this demo because it's um, it's really good when you're working with very very low frequencies. It's very configurable as well. Now I'll just load some settings up that I've already pre um, pre done. We'll use this uh, ELF underscore RX Jose dot user file which will basically set everything up the way I want it okay so that's on now you see there's no signal there or anything happening at the moment sound card is on sound cards getting its power from the laptop so everything is on except that now we'll turn that on and now that we've got that on we'll see something on the spectrum there so wait for that to settle now what this display, it seems a little bit slow, but what it's doing is it's averaging over time. When you're trying to receive a 1 hertz signal, uh, obviously you're only going to get a full cycle every second. So the display, you have to have it so that it averages over a bit of time. So at the moment, we're looking at a huge peak there, which is the 50 hertz. So that's the antenna itself, the front end picking up 50 hertz, mains frequency. You've got the second harmonic at 100 hertz. You got the third harmonic at 150 hertz. Notice how the third harmonic is always stronger than the second harmonic. And of course, the actual 50 hertz, which is a source of that signal, 
is uh, actually off the scale. It's quite strong. If we look at the uh, spectrum there, you can see that both of those, or all of those, the 50 hertz plus the uh, harmonics are quite strong. All right, come back to the sound card. Now, I noticed straight away on the sound card that the red LED light is on, which means that it's being overloaded. So I'll try to turn it down a little bit. I've got it on minimum, but it's still it's still flashing, which means that it's overloaded. So what I need to, well, what's actually overloading the sound card is actually just 50 hertz mains frequency in this room. It's, it's actually overloading the sound card. So when the ADC in the sound card is overloaded, you start to get all kinds of weird effects and images and things. So to avoid that, I need to stop that from overloading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to stop the video again. But I'll place a 50 hertz notch filter in line between the front end and the sound card. And that'll, that'll block 50, well it won't block it fully, but it'll, it'll attenuate the 50 hertz considerably and stop the sound card ADC from being overloaded, which will help in our little experiment here. So I'll, do, I'll stop the video and I'll do that now, connect that up. Okay, we're back now. I've got my 50 hertz uh, twin T notch filter, which is um, fairly good at attenuating 50 hertz. Of course, it does nothing for the harmonics, say, at, uh, at 150 hertz uh, and up, but it definitely attenuates the 50 hertz, which is actually the strongest one, which is the one that usually gives you the most grief when you're doing these kind of experiments uh, in a built-up area or in your house, for that matter. Now, you notice now the uh, red LED, the overload LED, isn't on anymore, which means I can probably turn up the gain. There you go, I can turn up the gain to a bit, nearly three quarters before the actual overload LED comes on. So, we can back that off. We don't have to have it very high. Actually, I'll have it at minimum because we probably don't need to have it up too high. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay, so let's have a look at our spectrum again. Now, one thing about this when you're receiving very, very low frequencies. Now, at the moment, the spectrum display there is looking at between 0 hertz and about 170 hertz. Now, at those frequencies, any movement in this room, which I'm waving my hand about, will cause the spectrum to go quite quite silly. See, now it's all settling back down again. If I move my hand again, it'll kind of, especially the very, very low frequency, notice how they, uh, they increase quite considerably. Now, I'm not moving my hand, it's sitting perfectly still here. Okay, now, I guess I'm going to have to move around a little bit, but you'll see that the spectrum will actually sit down and stop bouncing around when I stop moving. Okay, so the spectrum has now dropped. We've got the laptop screen just decided to <laughs> go into screensaver mode. I'm going to have to wait for it to settle again. Okay, so you can clearly see the, um, the 50 hertz mains signal, which is the first spike there. This one here has been greatly attenuated. Um, remember before it was off the scale, now it's at about 50. So we've, we've lost, we've attenuated by 50 dB. The second harmonic obviously doesn't really change a lot because um, it's a 50 hertz filter. And the third harmonic doesn't really change a lot either, although it probably does change a little bit. But anyway, the main one that we wanted to get rid of a little bit was the, uh, the very first one. Now keep in mind, when you're up on a mountain somewhere far away where you would uh, actually receive the Schumann uh, resonance, you wouldn't actually have too much 50 hertz um, signal. So generally you're looking for a place where you don't have any 50 hertz signal at all or very, very small amounts of it, even without the 50 hertz filter. Okay, now, at this stage of the game, we bring into effect a digital function generator which will generate the signal that we want at uh, at one hertz. Now at the moment it's set to 10 kilohertz so I'll just stop the video because I, I really don't have, uh, I need both hands to set that down to uh, say one hertz for starters. I'll just stop the video and I'll come back to it in a second. 
Okay, so we've got we're back again with the function generator on. We've got a well this is one kilohertz here. So this is the one hertz here. So at the moment it's set to one hertz, about 16 volt output, which is fairly low sort of power. And we've got the output of now. What's left to do now? Obviously there's no if I stop moving you see the spectrum will drop to where it should be okay so there's nothing happening there so what we need to do now we're going to connect up an antenna to the output of the signal generator now this is not a very good way of doing things but I do have a an antenna out there which I use for shortwave and as long as I connect it only to the center conductor it actually produces a signal and which we can actually receive you now so at the moment it's set to one hertz so if we watch the display now i'll have to sneak up on it and then stop moving for a bit you see the background falls away and you can you should be able to clearly see a spike there at the one hertz position now it's not very strong at the moment so i might turn that Turn the gain of the uh, sound card up just a little bit. So yeah, there, there's the one hertz signal. Now that's being transmitted over the air uh, from the signal generator. It's a function generator. It's connected to a coaxial cable, which is connected to a Windham antenna outside and that one hertz signal is being received by that antenna there which is only very short at the moment so it doesn't really need to be long the output of that one hertz is actually going through a uh, 50 hertz notch filter just to knock down the 50 hertz to stop the uh, sound card from getting overloaded computers decided to uh, stop again what i might do is i might increase that frequency just a little bit just to five hertz which for all intents and purposes, uh, it's still the same thing. It's still a crazy frequency to be transmitting on. And it'll just make the spectrum a little bit easier to see. Just wait for that to drop down. There we go. If I get a little bit closer to the screen, you can see 5 hertz, and we've got our nice little spike at 5 hertz. I'll move the... Uh, Okay, yeah, it's not right on it. Somewhere around there. Anyway, that's 5 hertz, minus 36 dBm. So there we are, we're transmitting at 5 hertz now. If I increase the frequency here from 5 to something a little bit higher, like 30, you notice that as you go higher in frequency, the efficiency of the whole thing becomes a lot better. So the signal increases. Now we're getting a signal at 20 hertz. I don't know what's going on there, but possibly this uh, cheap Chinese um, signal generator is doing strange things. But there's the 30 hertz signal, quite strong. Now, let's move back out. There's the 30 hertz. Maybe if we turn the um, gain down a little bit more, it might improve those, uh, stop those other signals from appearing. No, it's still there. Okay, I don't know why it's doing that, but obviously the signal generator is doing a little bit of uh, strange stuff. Now even down at these frequencies you still have harmonics so that 30 will produce a slight signal at 60 which you can just see and it'll probably produce a stronger signal at about 90 which you can see there. So even this low in frequency you still have harmonics to deal with which is quite interesting. Alright so that in a nutshell is what I use to receive the Schumann resonance and I might also add too for people that are interested in VLF and ELF and LF. Um, there are actually signals 
uh, down this low on frequency the Russians used to have some signals around 70 Hertz I don't know whether they still use those or not but there are still some signals down in this very very low range uh, which are used for uh, navigation and maybe to pass data obviously at these very very low um, frequencies I mean if you've got a, a one hertz signal you can't really modulate that in any way other than just turning it on and off like Morse code and you know it's going to be very slow going to send you know five or six uh, different dashes and dots when you have to wait one second at least between each each uh, on off cycle in order to convey your little Morse code message but uh, anyway there you have it I'll just turn that a little bit lower maybe go down to about 15 and we wait for the spectrum to come down and there's your signal at 15 So I hope you guys all found this, uh, look at the colour of the, uh, when you point the phone at a computer screen and then you point it at something else, the colour balance is completely wrong. But anyway, there's my little experiment. As you can see, I've only got the antenna down a little bit. Now, in the next couple of days, I'm going to do something more interesting, and that is I'm going to leave this thing connected at about, say, 10 hertz, or 5 hertz. And I'm going to take the laptop, sound card, the notch filter, and that front end, I'll take it down to the local park, which is about maybe 300 meters away from here, yeah, approximately. I'll take it to the park and 400 meters, and I want to see if I can receive my 5 hertz signal from the park, which I should be able to do, I'm guessing. Uh, if I increase the gain on that, pull that antenna out fully to uh, about 70 centimeters maybe even use the longer antenna. Uh, I'll also be in the middle of a park which is away from, uh, there'll be still 50 hertz there but much less than what there is here in the radio room. And uh, I should be able to receive my signal over 400 meters. And if that's the case, well I'll be happy. If not, well, bad luck. But I will be taking this receive system in the next month or two up to a, one of the highest mountains we have here in this part of Australia. Um, for a couple of days and try to receive the Schumann residence up there, record it all, get some video of it, and then um, hook up my other uh, mini whip antenna and receive some uh, your typical VLF stuff like the Alpha, the Russian Alpha signals and a few other uh, submarine comms type stuff and record it all so it'll be all fun. I'll spend a couple of days up there basically. Uh, and uh, do do this sort of stuff. All this that's happening on the spectrum is because I'm physically moving around here. So you can't have any kind of movement when you're doing this. Any anything moving anywhere in the you know in the vicinity of the antenna will cause that spectrum to to uh, jump up and down. So it makes a very good movement detector as well. So I've got to pick a day when it's not windy. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.